Welcome again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Life after death and the judgment. Paul writes, For we know that if the earthly house of our tent is dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. When Paul says the earthly house of our tent, he's talking about our physical body, the earthly house of our tent. So when he says, when the earthly house of our tent is dissolved, we have another dwelling from God, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. What Paul is talking about is when our physical body dies, we will have a spiritual body. For most certainly in this we groan, longing to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. Paul says that we groan, we long for the heavenly body. We have our physical body, but we long for our heavenly body. If indeed being clothed, we will not be found naked. For indeed, we who are in this tent, or in this physical body, do groan, being burdened. Not that we desire to be unclothed, but that we desire to be clothed, that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now he who made us for this very thing is God, who also gave us the down payment of the Spirit. Paul is saying that the Spirit of God that we receive when we are born again is basically God's down payment for our salvation, for that new heavenly body that we will receive in heaven. Verse 6, Therefore we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, that is in our physical body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight, not by our physical human sight. We are courageous, I say, and are willing rather to be absent from the body and to be home with the Lord. Paul is saying that he is willing to die. Therefore also we make it our aim, whether at home or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. Now if Jesus is pleased with us no matter what we do, then why would Paul say that he makes it his aim to be pleasing to him? For we must all be revealed before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. I want you to look at this phrase right here, the judgment seat of Christ. Some people believe that the judgment seat of Christ is different than the judgment seat of God. Listen, the judgment seat of Christ is the judgment seat of God, okay? There is no difference, okay? There is no two judgments. God does not have a double standard. He is not a hypocrite here, okay? The judgment seat of Christ is the judgment seat that everyone will come to. Read Matthew chapter 25. It's very clear. The sheep and the goats, those who are saved and those who are not saved, those who belong to God and those who do not belong to God, both come before the same judgment seat at the same time. And it's then that Jesus sorts them out, okay? A lot of people don't even go by what Jesus actually said is going to happen on judgment day. They draw out a whole theology based upon what Paul said. And they pick a verse here, they pick a verse here, and they just basically build a whole theology about it. Go by what Jesus himself said. Check out Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Check out Matthew chapter 25. Jesus makes it very clear exactly what's going to happen on Judgment Day. Until next time, seek him with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.